Tournament Preview Show with Sports Director Travis Lee on Channel 8 WMTW. Welcome back, and time flies. 20 years ago this year, the Mr. and Miss Basketball standouts were Erica Stupinski of Mount Ararat. Fitting that we're talking about her in a year where Mount Ararat is a title contender. The Mr. Basketball was one of the Mount Rushmore names of Maine High School basketball, Ralph Mims of Brunswick. Later tonight, we'll reveal the 10 boys and girls semifinalists for Mr. and Miss Basketball in the state of Maine. Let's keep living in the past with some great moments in tournament history. Speaking of Ralph, 20 years ago this year, he scored 46 in the state final, an electric performance, but it wasn't enough to beat a really Bedard good in the Portland again, team. 30 years ago, Andy Bedard, 53 points in the state final win over Camden Rockport. 30 years ago, Cindy Blodgett helped pull off the four peak for Lawrence. 10 years ago, the Macaulay girls won their last title before the school closed. And a decade ago as well, the Holton boys beating Wayne Fleet in overtime for the Class C championship. Now, Rich Henry's Flyers are the only non-Mountain Valley Conference team to win the C-South region in the last 25 years. Before that, the last team, Falmouth, back in 99. Again, the Mountain Valley Conference has plenty of contenders to get back to a state game. Karabek hangs its hat on defense and ended the season winning seven of its last eight games. Wayne Fleet also finished strong by winning seven of its last eight, and Jed Alsup emerged as a legitimate scorer. Richmond started the year with a 12-game win streak. Hunter Mason and Kenny Meacham make their offense go. Mount Abram has firepower, starting with Peyton Mitchell and Cam Gray, who combined to score 40 points a game. The Roadrunners hope to ride their up-tempo game to states. Monmouth can win with versatility. Every one of their nine rotation players brings something different to the table. Surrounding their star, Sammy Calder, who's averaged 25 a game as a senior. Well, joining me to break down the tournament, Michael Hoffer of the Forecaster. Michael, Mount Abram nearly went to the state game a year ago. They led eventual champ Deergo in the fourth quarter before Deergo came back to win. And it looks like it's going to be an interesting battle at the top for some of these C teams. Yeah, I find the C South tournament almost annually is, is one of the most, if not the most interesting tournament. You've got so much passion around these schools playing in Augusta, so many great players, and then occasionally you'll have a team from down this way coming up and, uh, and becoming a factor too. And the Wayne Fleet boys, they didn't get to Augusta last year, which is a rarity. Uh, they've made up for that this year, 14 and four. Uh, they're gonna be really tough. You mentioned Jed Alsup, but uh, Nico Kirby, just a big game player. Wayne Fleet has a lot of kids who have won state titles in soccer and lacrosse, and they're not gonna be an easy out for anybody. Now, speaking of that, those winning kids, Mount Abram coming off a soccer championship. Great We've got a plenty of guys that uh, are on the basketball team in Monmouth, won in soccer and baseball last Last year, their coach Wade Morrill says those guys just have a, a feeling of how to win, so it should make for an interesting tournament. Mm -hmm. X Factor for Monmouth, Levi Laverde, a freshman, their second leading scorer this year, has been a, a real spark plug for that team. And, you know, Deer goes down in the eighth seed, they're the two time defending champ. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel Waitwright has had a pretty good season, and, you know, I, I'm sure a number one seed is not going to want to see that team no. uh, show up with the, uh, the ability that they have and, and their history. And the MVC? A very, very physical conference this year. So we'll see how that plays out on the Augusta floor with officiating and just uh, the war that it was in that league this year, Michael. All right, moving on to Class C girls in the South. Well, it's been ruled lately by Monmouth, Booth Bay, Winthrop, Haldale, and Old Orchard. They've combined to win the last six state championships. Saucopee Valley rode the talents of senior Emma Belanger to the five seed. She put up 15 and 11 a game for the Hawks this year. Madison had to play six games over the final 10 days of the season. Before that, they were 12-0. Richmond went 16-2, and, and Izzy Stewart fills the stat sheet. She's a double-double machine for the Bobcats. Haldale's only loss came to Class B Spruce Mountain. Hayden Medore was a key part of the Bulldogs' 2022 title-winning team, and Jade Graham can fill it up. NYA is the number one seed and will try to get back to the regional final. Grazia Bila is the only starter back from that team and has elevated her game. She's the driving force in the Panthers' pressure defense. And the state runner-up from last year is Dexter. They were 17-1. They're the number one seed in C North. And surprisingly, no unbeaten teams in Class C to enter the tournament this year, Michael. So seems like everybody's got a fair shot at knocking someone off in this one. Yeah, some very good balance. And you look at the NYA girls, they've been so close the last two seasons. Uh, let a big lead slip away and a loss to Haldale in the regional final two years ago. Last year, lost a heartbreaker in overtime to Old Orchard Beach. And you graduate Angel Huntsman, Sarah English, you think NYA's coming back to the pack. 
but they go 17 and one. Uh, you mentioned Grasa Biela, the only senior on that team. She does it all for them. Athena Gee uh, really finished the season strong, made eight three pointers in a season ending win over Sakopee Valley. And Ella Jaguer, uh, another big contributor for that NYA team. They're hungry to get back to that final game and, and maybe uh, take that next step because they've been really, really close. And they'll want to rebound the first time they got a crack at Haldale. Right. Haldale beat them 61 to 38. Haldale. Got that high octane offense with Lori Rowe running the ship there in her first year as head coach. They've had four games over 85 points this year. And at the bottom of the bracket, Sakopee, Poland, Winthrop, Karabek. Uh, some of those teams hoping to maybe pull a big upset on the big four if they can yeah. make it out of the uh, prelims. And uh, a shout out to Poland. They're in the tournament. They dropped down to C this year. And for the first time in a number of years, they'll be playing a playoff game. So congratulations to the Knights. All right, moving on. The Sea South girls have the longest layoff. They start the quarterfinals on Tuesday of tournament week. Our plays of the year for girls hoops. That's Madeline Oliviera of Oxford Hills, the half court shot. Maddie Fitzpatrick, a sensational steal and hoop. And Jalissa McBaron of Sanford, one of the more underrated players you'll find. She can do it all. Blocks the shot and then hits the home run outlet for two. More tournament preview show when we come back.